Player of the Year frontrunner is in the house tonight, Sabrina Ionescu and Oregon. But this is the home of the Cardinal winners of 29 in a row against the Ducks and Maples. Welcome to the Pac-12 on ESPN. And the biggest week in the conference race is underway. It's number three, Oregon, and number 11, Stanford. As we check out the top three in the league, they are all squaring off this weekend and into next week. Stanford already with a win a couple of nights ago against Oregon State. As the Ducks open up today, two games clear atop the table. And we welcome you inside Maples Pavilion. Beth Mullins and Rebecca Lobo. And a chance today, Rebecca, for the Ducks to take a major step towards a second consecutive Pac-12 title. Yeah, this game's so important for both of these teams in terms of the conference standings. And yeah, Oregon could kind of get an insurmountable lead if they were able to win this game with only six conference games left. And they're such a potent and exciting offensive team. They have a great, efficient post player inside, surrounded by terrific shooters on the perimeter. And they are led by Nash favorite for National Player of the Year, Sabrina Ionescu. 16 triple doubles in her career. She is electrifying, a lot of fun to watch. We got a couple other players to watch today. And for more on that, here's Holly Rowe. Well, we've got some very exciting European imports for you. For Oregon, even though Sabrina Ionescu is one of their best players, the leading scorer in Pac-12 games has actually been Satu Sabli out of Berlin, Germany. Her game is just evolving. She's getting more and more confident with every opportunity. And for Stanford, the irrepressible Elena Smith. She is, excuse me, Alana Smith. She is out of Australia. Last time we saw her play, she was playing against the U.S. national team in the FIBA World Championship. She's averaging 22 points a game in her last 13. She is a must-see scorer. Cardinal in their home whites. And the Ducks, their road greens, their only win here at Stanford in their series back in 1987. And a chance to end that skid here today and take control in the Pac-12 Conference. Also crucial for who gets to stay home in the West Regional come NCAA tournament time where one of the regionals will be in Portland, Oregon. And the Ducks have talked openly about wanting to be there for that. The starting lineup, it's a younger team for the Cardinal. Three primary scorers led by Smith, number 11 in white. Dijanae Carrington gets a touch inside for Atlanta, and she's able to score over Sabalou. We saw Oregon starting out in a man-to-man. -man. Expect them throughout the course of the game to switch up their defenses. They had a lot of success in the Pac-12 championship game, going primarily with a zone defense. We're going to see a lot of pick-and-roll action today from the Ducks. It's something they do really well. There's a takeaway. Smith got a hand in the passing lane. Tara Vanderbilt has to be really happy with her first two defensive possessions. Oh, pretty on the crossover from Kiana Williams. Sophomore out of San Antonio. Working inside and off the window, Ruthie Hebert, last year's power forward of the year nationally. And that's the conundrum when you're going defensively against Oregon. They have a post player inside who shoots 70%, but she's surrounded by perimeter players who all shoot better from, than 40% from three. So how do you double down? They have to defend all five spots on the floor for the Ducks. They've had four different players with a 30-point game this year. Shot clock's under five. Carrington trying to find some space and can't. Here is Sabrina Yonescu with those 16 career triple doubles. Aaron Boley, the transfer from Notre Dame. That's what I'm talking about, Beth. So you see Hebert take a couple dribbles, so you have to send the double team. And what happens? Passes back out. Boley drains the three. You cannot send a double. You just have to try to prevent her from getting the touch in the first place. Smith can't knock that down. It's an Oregon team that has been knocking on the door the last two years with trips to the Elite Eight. 
This may be their best team ever in a shot at the Final Four in a national championship. And one of the reasons is the improvement of Satu Sabali from a season ago. Her offensive game has truly blossomed. Eight straight points for the Ducks. Off the dribble, Maya Dodson hard off the window. Morgan so good at the counter strike. Hebert with the face up, now trying to back down the defender, and it's swatted by Dodson. Got to deal with some good size for the Cardinal. Dodson at 6-3. Alongside the 6-4 Smith. Kelly Graves now in his fifth season and coming off the best year in school history last year, 33 wins and a regular season championship. Then they doubled down and beat Stanford in the Pac-12 final last year, pulled away in the second half and a big day for Ionescu. Deep into the shot clock again. Smith with the left hand doesn't get the roll. Nice hesitation, the move to the bucket, and a foul, they're gonna get a charge on Sabalu. When you're going defensively against Oregon in transition, you have to get back, but you don't just have to get back to the paint, you have to get back to their three-point shooters. Nice job by Sabalu to go by, but terrific help side defense to be there to get the charge. Carrington, the junior from San Diego. Really come on strong for them. Her first year in the starting lineup. Here's Smith. Got to respect her three ball. Maite Cazola with the rebound. Hebert with a touch in the lane. So Oregon's pinpointed that they can take advantage of their size inside. This is a team that is heavy in the pick and roll, but they haven't gone with that a lot so far in this game because they have the advantage just going directly into the post. They've scored the last 10 points in a row, and Stanford has missed four straight shots and a three-second violation. Hebert getting the ball inside so good. She can go both ways strong. 70% from the field, Three second seconds. in the nation. <laughs> she gets deep position, it's over. Yonescu, yeah, mid-range, letting the game come to her. That's what Tara Vandiver said she was willing to give up, was the mid-range. She didn't want to give up layups, she didn't want to give up threes. So much of Stanford's offense involves getting the ball to the high post elbow area. And I think Oregon's done a really nice job disrupting that, not letting get the pass in there. That time it resulted in a foul. But that's one of their points defensively. There's Tara Vandeveer, 900 career wins at Stanford, over 1,000 total in her coaching career. Now in her 40th season on the sideline, which includes a couple of national championships and an Olympic gold medal. Williams short on the shot. Ionescu. Not only can she score it, but she's tops in the league and assists and a floater there. Timeout. Stanford 14 unanswered for the Ducks. Hot start for the front runner for national player of the year honors. The raindrop for the Ducks and Yo. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Voya Financial, helping you to and through retirement. Learn more at Voya.com and K Jewelers for all the moments for love forever. Uh, it's been a, uh, a series, really, and a conference dominated by Stanford over the last 25 years. Owning this rivalry, including 29 in a row over Oregon here at Stanford. But what have you done for me lately? Well, the Ducks won the Pac-12 tournament final 
handily over Stanford, and they are starting out hot right now. 14 unanswered points, and defensively, Rebecca, they have shut down Stanford for the last four minutes. Well, what's been the question about Oregon all season long? It's been about their defense, because we know how productive they are on the offensive end, and Kelly Graves told us before the game, we're a solid defensive team this year. I've been really impressed in these first few minutes of what they've done to, to make Stanford uncomfortable on that end of the floor. There's no flow right now for Stanford. I think they've seen the last couple of years, yeah, we can try and outscore people, but at some point, deep into the NCAA tournament, late in a game, you're going to need stops. And that's been a bone of contention with them, something we have to improve upon if we're going to compete at the Final Four. Just checking right now with Holly from that Stanford huddle. Well, Tara Vandeveer calling that timeout because she is furious with her team right now. She lit them up in the huddle. You are not being aggressive. You're not driving the ball like you believe you can score. You're picking up your dribble. Everybody's tentative. She's also made a defensive change right now. Jenna Brown, number 54 in white, into the game, and she looked at her and said, you're on their point guard. If you can shut her down and play good defense, you'll play the rest of the game. She understands the importance of trying to disrupt this Oregon Duck scoring offense. So she has to be happy that right away they get to the free throw line, although it was late in the shot clock and it was really trying to create one-on-one. -on -one. That ended a four and a half minute drought. Maite Cazorla, second chance opportunity for Hebert. She's a workhorse and that's what you want from your post player, just to continue to work, whether you're posting up or getting to the offensive glass. Here's one of the whole sisters, Lacey. Second chance opportunity for Dotson. You, know, you talk about this rivalry and how dominant it has been for Stanford and really this entire Pac-12 conference. They had won 14 titles in a row, but they have not been the champs in the league for the last four years in the regular season. The defensive play there. And nobody is prouder of that than Tara Vanderveer. She thinks that the way Stanford has done it over the years has helped elevate everyone else's game Nowhere as much as at Oregon and Oregon State in recent years. You set the standard and hope that the rest of the teams in the yep. conference will follow. Nice job by Dotson on the drive. Oregon will play Oregon State back to back next weekend. The pull up for Sabali. So early on, get the ball into Hebert, posting up down low. Now pull her out, put her in some pick and roll action so your guards can get their mid range shots. Everybody's getting a touch. Everybody's getting a chance. It's happening organically. Look at the defense by Cazorla not allowing Brown to get it. And again, they're going to have to work deep into the shot clock. Dodson off the bounce. Doesn't get the roll. Smith took it away from Sabali. And they're going to get a foul there on Alana. But Stanford's going to have to get some of that. They're going to have to get second opportunities because they're not getting anything easy initially in their offense. They got a second look that time with Alana Smith getting to the boards, but they got to figure out a way to get some easier looks. Maybe it starts on the defensive end, try to get out in transition, but right now things are not easy for Stanford offensively. Just 25%. They've missed nine of their last ten. Meanwhile, the Ducks are flirting with 70% shooting. Not really needing to rely on their three ball. Another second chance and a kick ball here. He dribbled into the double team. Help coming from Smith. Really good length for Stanford defensively. Off the bounce, Hall with the pull up. They cannot get a bounce to go their way here in the first quarter. There's the pick and roll game, Yonescu. Dotson may have gotten a piece of that. Smith in the trail. Oh for five from deep. Crowd's trying to 
Get him going here, down 10. Takeaway for the Cardinal. Gets to the middle and then denied. Counter will try for three and hit it. That was really good defensive possession. And making Williams take the contested shot. Stanford finally makes one. Two man game for Yo and Hebert. Pick your poison and it's another mid range for Yo. That is tough to defend right there and a takeaway for Ruthie. Final 30 seconds of the first quarter. the screen for UNESCO the off the crossover for three got her feet right and that'll take care of the first quarter 22 11 Oregon on top through one as they try and end the stretch of 29 straight road losses at Stanford Twenty to 11 Stanford trailing Oregon there's Dan UNESCO Sabrina's dad, and she's off to a pretty good start and a balanced attack. She's from these parts, Walnut Creek, California. Her parents are from Bucharest, so she can speak a little Romanian. There's the nicknames, including Bazooka Mode and those 16 triple doubles, B. Speaks Romanian, speaks Bay Area. <laughs> she's, I think she's trilingual. Speaks ball. I mean, she can do it all there's a there's an opportunity you know there's been some talk will she stay for her senior year a possibility that she could turn pro and let's check in right now with holly Rowe. well guys we actually talked to kelly graves about that if he's had a conversation with her about maybe testing her WNBA waters and he said no you know we're not going to have that in-depth conversation right before we face stanford or oregon state <laughs> next week not the time or the place but maybe later in the season they will sit down and have that. He said, we'll love her no matter what decision she decides to make. She is all about basketball. Her dad, Dan, told me that when she was little, they bought her a little Fisher-Price, you know, plastic basket. She threw it away. She wanted to shoot at the real basket. Since she was about four years old, she's loved nothing but basketball, so we shall see. I mean, she really could have an historic career numbers-wise. You're talking about the possibility of 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 1,000 assists if she comes back next year. I think a lot will probably be determined by whether or not they win the national championship, which obviously they are in great shape to make a run at it. Sabali for three, that won't go. And an over the back foul here on Hebert. Much better defensive energy from Stanford there. Trying to get the ball out of Ionescu's hands now, sending a double team to her. The last offensive possession was the first easy shot we've seen them get with a three from the corner. Stanford making a bit of a run. Ducks led by as many as 10 in that first quarter. Hall. And Sabali's got it. This is an Oregon team that averages 90 points per game. The Cardinal would rather it not get that high. So they got to like the pace at this point. Good defensive play and the help from Dodson. And another foul on the Ducks. Is this two in a row on Ruthie? Nope, they're going to get Sobley. Oh, on Big Monday coming your way, a doubleheader on the men's side, North Carolina and Virginia. The Cavs just lost to Duke yesterday. That's Monday at 7 Eastern. And then Kansas and TCU, both games also on your ESPN app. So a significant development here. The second foul on Sabali. She will sit. 
possibly for the rest of the half. Maddie Gilden replaces her number 32 in green. Lenescu with a rebound. Head up, checking for other green jerseys. Instead, she'll step through and lay it up and in. So dangerous. I loved watching her just then, dribbling down. One of the rare point guards who's looking behind her, too, to see who might be trailing the play because you have so many good three-point shooters, you could drop that, but instead finishing inside. That was a very good memory playing against Stanford where she scored 36 on the Cardinal in last year's Pac-12 Finals. Dodson's been impressive. Another much improved player. Maya is a big reason why Tara is hopeful that down the stretch here we'll, we'll see the as healthy as they can be Stanford team. Dodson missed uh, almost a month due to an injury. This is just her fourth game back. They're without Nadia Fingal. She'll be gone for the rest of the year. They're starting point guard. They've had some time to work in other people at that spot. We'll see now if Stanford can be more effective against the zone defense. It's a tough pass trying to force it inside. Waiting for the screen from Hebert. Pizzorla, a nice little hesitation. That's Lacey Hull with the rebound. She and her sister, the freshman from Spokane. Is Lexi in trouble? Aaron Boley, Aaron Boley back in right here for Hebert. Air ball on that three. That's her spot, too. Mm. And then Taylor Chavez lost her way. Williams. Sloppy couple trips up and down the floor here for both sides. Gilden gets the lane. Whether it's the starting five or players in off the bench, Oregon, such an unselfish team making that extra pass. Chavez stepping into the passing lane. And then Williams able to knock it loose. I mean, the unselfish nature for each and every one of these players. And a round three spin on the ball so Gilden can finish inside. And that starts with your leader. Passing is contagious. If your top players are willing to make the extra pass, as we've seen all season or career from UNESCO, that gets everyone else to feel more comfortable and willing to do it as well. Yeah, they, they all aggressively hunt their shot when it's there. UNESCO, that one barely even touched the net. Shot hunters, pass hunters. She's got 10. The next reality show on ESPNU. <laughs> Well, the zone continues to create problems for Stanford. Jerome, that won't go. Yeah, you're going to have to hit those. I'm not going to get a lot inside against this zone. Looking for their biggest lead of the day. It's going to stay with the Ducks. Sabrina Ionescu can get it done from three, makes the passes. A little mid-range game, pretty sweet too. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by McDonald's. Oh, they are.
Thank you very much, Sean. Well, the uh, Oregon Ducks, 16 points in the paint. UNESCO has 10 to lead the way. Stanford well below their season average. They are not lighting it up like that fella's jacket right there, just 27% shooting. Can I just say that my Sunday, as much as I'm enjoying you and Holly Rowe, is a little bit, there's a little bit of a void there because I'm not sitting next to Andy Landers <laughs> uh, in studio, although not having to sit next to Brick almost <laughs> makes up for that. Well, Andy is absolutely right with the tempo right now. It has definitely slowed down in this second quarter to allow Stanford to kind of hang around, but as Aaron Bowley knocks down the three, the story, Rebecca, really has been the defensive end here for the Ducks and just shutting Stanford down. Yeah, it's been terrific. They started out in a very aggressive man-to-man. -man. They've switched to this zone as they have different personnel on the floor, but both have been effective. Harrington finds a little space there. Started out the day, Oregon two-game lead over Stanford and Oregon State. They will play the Beavers twice next week. So uh, an opportunity really to, for all intents and purposes, sew up another regular season championship with four games left. And perhaps a number one seed, as they referenced uh, during that last time out. There are probably seven different teams right now that still have a shot at a number one seed come NCAA tournament time. By the way, we'll have the first reveal tomorrow night at halftime of that UConn South Carolina game. They'll reveal the top 16 seeds for the selection committee as of tomorrow. That's always fascinating, you know, to see where the where this committee has people seated, how that's gonna play out in terms of where they go in their region and the fluid nature of it all. You know, we can have a great conversation about it now and then things completely change yeah. like they did, you know, after after Notre Dame lost a couple weeks ago. Yeah, is this, and then the Pac-12 championship game, if it's these same two teams, the Rumble for the Rose Garden Regional. Portland, one of the sites, Rose City, I should say. Chavez, the skip. Bowley trying to go off the bounce. Chavez. They're going to be up at the Moda Center in the Portland Regional. The Ducks with the uh, leg up in the race to get there, but Stanford could change that. Smith. Let's check in with Holly. Well, you know, Kelly Graves actually brought that up to his team when conference play started. He said, we have an opportunity to stay close to home. Two games in Eugene, two games in Portland in the NCAA tournament, and we're in the final four. He really wants them focused on that, that number one overall seed um, so that would keep them at home. He said, hey, we've been up front about it, talking about that out loud as something to shoot for. I like that approach. Embrace it. Don't, don't shy away from it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Make sure you're aware of the goal that you're reaching for. A couple possessions ago, you said, you know, Oregon having, the Ducks having the leg up. Do Ducks have legs? What would they have up there? Uh, let's see. Duck bills, duck, uh, the webbed feet up? They'd have a webbed foot They'd up. have webbed feet up. <laughs> Carrington swooping in for a help ball. That's the latest bracketology from Charlie Cream. You'd have to think at this point either Baylor, Louisville, or Oregon would be the overall number one. We'll find out tomorrow why tomorrow night's game for UConn is so vitally important against South Carolina. It's their last big test. You cannot lose her on the perimeter. Ionescu lighting them up here in the first half. That's a dad clap right there. <laughs> My baby girl. Smith. Hebert's got it. 14 to 4 run right now for Oregon. Yonescu with 13 first half points. Inside to Ruthie Hebert, and there's a couple of assists now for Sabrina. Simple but perfect pass. Fake, little drop with your left hand. Nice job. Danger zone here for Stanford, heading into the locker room. 
Trying to keep it close. They're going to turn it over again. Ducks with numbers. Right back to Kazorla. And Tara cannot wait for the half. She's got to burn a timeout. The 10 point lead has blossomed quickly into 20 for third ranked Oregon. A 20 point lead for Oregon. Let's break it down a little bit, Rebecca. Well, when you're playing against Oregon, not only do you have to deal with pick and roll, but look at how much screening action they have on this play. Aaron Boley sets a screen, so you have to defend that. Then another rescreen. Then the screen for Boley's player. Defensively, that's a lot of different actions to get through. We're going to get Boley with a hold right here. 11-0 run for Oregon. They've hit their last five shots. They've played seven here in the first half. All seven have scored. And another takeaway. Seven, excuse me, eighth turnover now for Stanford. Nice job by Boy to get over that back screen. Ionescu. She's, Easy off the window. She's gotten really good at that. And she not only has the floater with her right hand, she's a right-handed player, she's got the floater now with her left hand as well. Every pass, it seems like, is hard work for the Cardinal. Again with Oregon back to their man-to-man -man defense. They've been really, really tight defensively. Final seconds of the half. Ionescu checks the clock, uses the Hebert screen, gonna take it all the way in with the left hand. 17 in the first half for Sabrina. And defensively, they hold Stanford scoreless for the final four minutes. It's a team that loves the pick and roll. The hesitation coming off. It is just enough time for Ginescu to decide. Is the roll there? It's not. Takes it herself. Holly's got Kelly Graves. Well, Coach Graves, you went inside and really established your inside presence there. How did you think that worked out so far? Well, I think it's been great. I, I wish we would have finished even better. I, I think we've been a little tentative at the rim, but... Uh, there toward the end of the half, Ruthie was uh, was alone. She, uh, it's nice to have that anchor in there. Your anchor is one thing, but your what would you call Sabrina? She's not the anchor, but she's just doing everything right now. And well, she's the conductor. She's the one running this whole this whole show, and and she sure came ready to play. I think the whole team did. I I loved our energy. Obviously, offensively, we're doing some good things, but defensively, we were on point in that half. Coach, you guys haven't won in this building since 1987. What will be important to finish out this half? Well, this team's never lost to Stanford. I don't really care about all those other years. That's not this team. So we haven't even talked about that. I don't think they know about that. Uh, that streak may have started long before any of them were born. So, hey, listen, we still got another half. That's a great team over there in the Hall of Fame coach. They're going to figure something out. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Well, indeed, the conductor, Ionescu, making some sweet music. 17.6 rebounds, a, a couple of dimes dropped. And Pops is proud to the studio with John, Deb, and Andy. 84 to 20, Oregon with the lead over Stanford. And Sabrina Ionescu's eight baskets, one more than the entire Stanford team in that first half, and that is in serious jeopardy right there, folks. A streak of 29 losses in a row at Stanford. Maybe coming to an end, thanks to the Bay Area native. She's back in town and doing it all. Well, she showed in the first half every facet of her skill set. She can hit three-point shots. She's terrific getting to the glass, pushing in transition. She's as good as anyone in the country at finding open teammates. Finishes inside, we saw a couple floaters as well. Time and score, she knows it. Knows the time, so she scores. <laughs> and we welcome you courtside here in Maples Pavilion. Beth Mullins, Rebecca Lolo, Holly Rowe is with us as well. As good as efficient they were offensively, the defense was stellar as well, holding uh, Stanford to four points in the final seven minutes. Everything was difficult for Stanford on the offensive end of the floor because of how disruptive Oregon was defensively, whether they were in their man or their zone. Let's see if there's any adjustments here for Stanford in the second half. A win here for the Ducks gives them a commanding 
three-game lead over Stanford, two up on Oregon State with a couple of games against the Beavers next weekend. Scramble for the loose ball. That'll give us a chance to check in with Holly. Speaking with Stanford coach Tara Vandeveer, she said, look, I know Oregon is a really, really good team, but we didn't show any fight. We had a lot of open looks, and we just did not finish those. She said, I'm just very disappointed in how we competed. We are embarrassed. And that was a great example right there with Maya in the lane is just finishing those tough looks, being stronger inside. So you see kind of a contrast of how the game's going. Stanford made it a point to get the ball inside Holly. They miss on the on the close-in look, and then Oregon comes the other way and drains a three. It's been that kind of afternoon so far. Carrington to lean into the defender there. But definitely a point for Stanford to come out and attack the paint. The yeah. first time was getting a touch to their post player inside. That time was the drive getting two feet in the lane. Offensive foul going to be called on Sabali. And that's going to be her third personal. Sabali's minutes limited in the first half because of two fouls. Great job. Carrington just gets there. Five points for Satu, coming off a 31-point effort against Cal. And they a win a couple nights ago. Lana Smith's going to have to be someone who gets much more active. She was only one for eight offensively in the first half. Their front line really did not contribute. Comes right back to Dijonet. Good help there on the ball screen. There's Alana Smith, averaging 20 a game, one of the most versatile talents in the country. Has three 30-point performances on the resume this year. She may need a huge second half for them to get back in it. And an opportunity for three for Ruthie. And a simple but important thing on this play is you see where Sabrina throws the ball. As soon as she sees the defender going to the high side, she throws it to the low side. A small thing but an important thing because if you throw it to the offhand, the defense steals it. Fourth assist for Ionescu to go along with six rebounds and 17 points. So let's see if she can flirt with a 17th career triple-double in this second half. She batting her eyelashes at it yet? <laughs> Holly? Well, you know, it's just amazing to see the chemistry between Sabrina Ionescu and Ruthie Hebert. They came in as true freshmen together. Uh, Sabrina was the highly touted national recruit. Ruthie was kind of an unknown prospect out of Alaska, and they have grown together. I just love watching their chemistry, whether it's the two-man game, the pick and roll, or just how they find each other. That chemistry is palpable. The personalities fit their games, uh -huh. too. You know, Ruthie Hebert is kind of quiet out there as Hull hits the three. And, and her game is quietly efficient, and Sabrina Ionescu is the opposite. She's the flamboyant yeah. personality, and her game is very loud. And that relationship so critical. We went through something a little bit similar, although she was a year behind you with Jen Rosati in Connecticut. That growth together over a three- or four-year period, especially when you're trying to break through and get to the Final Four and win your first title. Time together is absolutely invaluable. Smith tried to get back-to-back -back buckets. It's nice to have a 6'4 wing player who can get inside and rebound. <laughs> Her improvement, too. A well-rounded game this year. She had some shortcomings Offensively, she's cleaned those up. Hebert from Yo again. Not enough people know how to pass into the post. And wow, Ionescu, it's not just in the pick and roll. We've seen two examples so far in this half. She knows how to just get her post player the ball exactly where she wants it. Carrington, nice crossover to get to the rim. She went away from the on-ball screen. She saw the defender cheating up, and great job recognizing that. 
Yo probably isn't worried about it, but basketball fans keep an eye on. You know, we've talked about her, one of the front runners for National Player of the Year honors. It's already been a big weekend. Kalani Brown at Baylor over 30. Asia Durr at Louisville, a 30-point game. Arike Agumbuwale at Notre Dame, 27 today. And the other day, Nafisa Collier at a 30-point game for Connecticut yesterday. Figuring out who's going to be the player of the year has not gone, gotten any easier, no. that's for sure. <laughs> Big win today as well for Maryland over Rutgers. That's the top two teams in the Big Ten. So here's Ionescu with the last triple. That will get her to 20 on the day. Well, I just want to help if you're trying to consider National Player of the please, Year. Please, please. So, um, no man or woman in college basketball history has as many triple doubles as Sabrina Ionescu. <laughs> uh, she broke the record. The record was 12, held by a BYU man. Oh. And um, she's got 16, and she's a junior. So, hey there, let's just calm down. It's that... going to be an easy decision. <laughs> she's got rebounds, assists, points, whatever. Well, she's definitely the front runner. Yes. That BYU guy, by the way, Kyle Collinsworth from Holly's home state of Utah. Cardinal trying to fight their way back into this, knowing that uh, even though the, the result today may be out of reach, there's a good chance they're going to see Oregon again in the Pac-12 tournament. And I want to maybe try and set a little different tone Hebert and Yo with 16 buckets. That's more than Stanford today. And they have been a phenomenal combo for three years together. Making plays like this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. For all the moments, for love, forever and Doritos for the bold. Elite Eight last year, so many key players returning. I mean, Oregon's such an exciting team this year. They really are, and the player I'm the most excited about. Sabrina Ionescu, your guard, what makes her special? Well, her competitiveness. She shoots the ball so well. But I think what I like best and appreciate is her elite vision. And sometimes it just seems like she's got eyes in the back of her head. Well, I think that we have two categories for best actresses right there. I think that was an outstanding performance. But, you know, it was really fun. She was at ESPN for National Media Day. We filmed that with her last year. Um, but we had to do a couple of takes. And I remember thinking, like, let's just not let her keep banging into this glass because we don't want to get her injured. So, thankfully, we got it on, like, the third or fourth take. Yeah, face first into a glass wall is never good. Uh, so you have to do it too many times. Uh, big day for Ionescu's from nearby Walnut Creek, California. And, uh, oh boy, get ready, folks. We're in triple-double territory. Six assists, six rebounds to go with the 20 points. Now you see Oregon back to their zone defense, continuing to switch it up. They score from all five positions. They're, they're unselfish the way they play offensively. And if they continue to play this kind of defense that has been shut down all afternoon, they are going to be a handful come tournament time. Bracketology's got them as a top seed, and they will probably get to stay home in Portland. So you got two games in Eugene, a bus ride up to Portland for the regional. On the road to the... Final four in Tampa. We're well, coming up tonight, 10 Eastern on Sports Center. Reaction from the Lakers and Sixers. We'll go behind the headlines with Kevin Durant and the Cowboys' biggest contract questions. Are they all going to be able to stay and play in Jerry World? That's coming up tonight on Sports Center. Notre Dame, an impressive win already today. Mississippi State, a route of Tennessee today. And now Oregon looking the part as well. 
Alyssa Jerome with the triple. A lot of the talk now will start to center around that Tennessee team, which has another rough loss today. Bracketology Charlie Cream thinks that after that kind of loss, they may be one of the teams outside looking in, which would be extraordinary. Team loaded with talent who's just had so many struggles this year. Anaya Davis had a stretch where she couldn't score. Davina Westbrook not playing in the game today. Good takeaway there for Lexi Hull. We were talking earlier, Rebecca, that there are a handful of teams that look to be really good, but no one really has separated themselves from the pack, have they? This is a season where we don't have that dominant front runner. You know, when was the last time we went to a Final Four without a team that was undefeated going into that weekend? And this year, you look up and down, there's a lot of teams you feel like can win a national championship. And for me, after seeing Oregon perform today so far the way they have on both ends of the floor, gosh, they have to be one of the favorites. They're one of my favorites. Well, oh, another assist for Ionescu to Sabali. Twenty re uh, points, eight rebounds, and seven assists now for Sabrina. Here she comes again. We'll pull up in the paint. Stanford has really struggled to stop ball all day long and that's certainly the first thing you got to do with Ionescu. Smith tried to muscle it up and in. The difference between that shot in the paint and the previous <laughs> shot in the paint by Oregon. Again the defender backed away from her and she knocks it down. Oregon shooting 75% in this third quarter. And they push the lead to 30. Smith for two. Pozorla. She'll take it all the way up and in. You know, Kelly Graves says she may be the best in the country with that high ball screen in the pick and roll. That's saying something when she's playing alongside Sabrina Ionescu. Senior from Spain, someone in the WNBA will take a look at her. You know, how difficult Oregon is to game plan for on the defensive end. They have four starters shooting better than 40% from the three-point line. Credit to Andy Landers. He was the one who brought that up in studio a week ago. And that's four players surrounding a post that shoots 70%. <laughs> on the season. I mean, it's pick your poison, and today they have been absolutely terrific from three, seven of nine from outside the three-point line. Three different players have hit a triple. They only have one trip to the free throw line today. They have been so efficient shooting it around the rest of the floor, they haven't needed to get there. You know, we've talked about how good Oregon has been on the defensive end today as well. And this is a team, good defensive, good defensive teams don't foul. And they're third in the country in, in foul rate. They do not foul very much, which is important when you have kind of the limited bench yeah, that first Kelly first Graves is working with. One of the under-the-radar stats of the, uh, the, all the UConn dynastic teams was that ability not to foul and to not to turn the ball over a lot. And... Really good they defenders. They do both of those, yeah. Really good defenders don't foul. Yeah. Really good offensive players don't turn it over. <laughs> Shot clock is off here for Stanford to end the third quarter. That pass is picked off. Kazorla. Blocked out of bounds on the drive by Morgan Yeager. One-tenth left on the clock here in the third. 
And that one is not up in time. 24 for Ionescu, 17 for Hebert. She needs a rebound and three assists, and she's talking triple-double again here in Maples as the Ducks try and win here for the first time in 29 tries. Tara Vandiver, her worst home loss in 33 years, unless the Cardinal can turn things around a bit. And one of the things Tara Vanderveer is known for is, you know, her defensive game plan that she's able to put up against opponents. Well, it's difficult. They've had one day since they played Oregon State, and they had a, you know, great game plan for that game. But the bigger issue today has been their offense. Stanford on the offensive end has simply been anemic. 14 baskets in 30 minutes so far, th shooting just 30%. The Ionescu watch, she needs a rebound and three assists to get her triple-double, which would be the 17th of her career. And Taylor Chavez will get the three. And a message sent not only to the rest of the league, but to the country. Ducks were trailing four to nothing, and then they went on a 14-0 run and have not looked back. There were a big Monday coming your way on the men's side. We got a double header for you. It's North Carolina hosting Virginia, and then Kansas in Fort Worth to take on TCU. Both games are available on your ESPN app. Got a big one on the women's side tomorrow night as well. South Carolina at UConn. And the NCAA Selection Committee will have the first of its two reveals. They will show us who, as of right now, are their top 16 seeds in order. And, of course, in the women's game, the top 16 hosts the first and second round. And it's an assist for Ionescu. 9 of 11 from 3 right now, Oregon. They have been doing it all. 81% from beyond the arc. 60% inside the arc. Pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. What are you looking for in that game tomorrow night? You'll be uh, you'll be back on the East Coast, correct? Yeah. I'm a uh, nice pass inside of Gilda. I'm eager to see if the Connecticut Huskies we've seen the past two games continues in terms of their efficiency. Katie Lou Samuelson has found her shot. Nafisa Collier has been playing great. This looks like a very confident team. Yeah, but this is their first big test since the game against Louisville where they really struggled on both ends of the floor. They are 7-0 and all-time against South Carolina, so it's significant for the Gamecocks as well to try and break through. Timeout call by the Ducks. There you go. Sixth straight meeting where they're in the top 15. And South Carolina playing much better ball with that three-point guard lineup. More on that one when we return. Hi, fans. It's Alana Smith. Thanks for Number 12, South Carolina. Number 5, UConn. Oh, my. Monday at 7 on ESPN2. Big Monday game for you tomorrow. And uh, you've also got the option to tune into ESPN3 and on your ESPN app for a little smack talk. Sue Bird and Asia Wilson. And also the first NCAA reveal will be coming up at halftime tomorrow night. I thought you were going to say smack talk between me and Kara Lawson. <laughs> no smack talk there. There may be some of that as well. Who, who do you give the edge to, Sue Bird or Asia Wilson? You know, I think they're both probably really good. Mm -hmm. Sue does her a little bit more on the sly. Yeah. You know, she's kind of the quiet Subtle smack. Talk. smack? Subtle smack, yeah. Just in case you needed a reminder, Sue is one of the all-time greats. And uh, fresh off her third WNBA championship, Asia Wilson was last year's WNBA Rookie of the Year. One from UConn, one from SoCar. Bird, an amazing performance in the semifinal round against Phoenix where she had the mask on her broken nose and came down, hit three after three after three. 
She was terrific in the finals last year in Asia Wilson, man. What a season. We all expected her to be good, but I don't know if we expected her to be a top 10 player in the league mm -hmm. right away, and she was. Asia and fans of the Las Vegas Aces may be hoping that Sabrina Ionescu might turn pro next year. They have the top draft pick for the third year in a row. Yo hasn't made any decisions, and none are expected until after the season. Jackie Young, by the way, at Notre Dame is another player that falls into that category, could if she wanted to. A rebound and two assists. That's what UNESCO is looking for for a triple-double. Turns it over there. Carrington found a way to scoop that one up and in. Sabali trying to go to work, and Jerome gets the block. Ten on the shot clock here for the Ducks. Breathing Hebert in for the Ducks. Hebert coming back in. You may see the starters more than you, you might think for Oregon. They do not have a very deep bench. The kick out. Kazorla for three. No. That would have been another assist for Sabrina. Folks, what up and in? Sabali rattles in the three. Their hot shooting continues from downtown. Ten of thirteen. Well, Sachu Sabali has just come alive for the Oregon Ducks in conference play, and I asked her about it yesterday, why she has suddenly turned this corner. You know, she came from international play last year, a new culture, a new language. Uh, German is her first language, and getting used to playing college basketball. And she said, I just was in such transition last year. My head was spinning. I was trying to just get through one game at a time, and I would just be overwhelmed with everything that was happening. She said, now I just can turn my brain off and let my game talk for itself. She said, I'm confident, I'm aggressive, and I'm finally getting back to playing like I used to play back home, and now she can do it here in the Pac-12. The leading scorer for Oregon in Pac-12 play with over 20 points per game. Yeah, she's been terrific this season. 6'4", the ability to hit three-point three shots, to put the ball on the floor, added the mid-range game, and... To your point, Holly, young players, and you get in, you're in a new system, a new environment, new players around you, a different pace of game. All of a sudden, you're starting to overthink instead of just rely on your instincts. And when you can just go back to playing basketball, always more efficient. Her sister, uh, Niara, is on the team. She's sitting out with a knee injury. And what a leap forward she has made to the point where Kelly Graves told us pregame she is now making, oh my God, type of plays that she wasn't last year. He didn't quite have his accent, but close. <laughs> <laughs> Good work to get it down inside, and Hebert a trip to the free throw line. Well, this is our next Super Tuesday double header. It's a, a doozy in the SEC on the men's side. Kentucky and LSU trying to keep pace with Tennessee, a game in front of them. And then the Duke Blue Devils will be taking on Louisville. Duke, another impressive win over Virginia yesterday. Super Tuesday, presented by Boost Mobile, also available on your ESPN app. Seventeen points, seven rebounds for Ruthie. Give her eighteen now for the day. Five minutes, an impressive road win for the Ducks. Ionescu leading the way for Oregon. Thank you, John. Boy, that Megan Gustafson is fun to watch at Iowa. One of the top bigs in the country. 
And uh, here in Pac-12 land, Oregon State's probably the only hope now for the rest of the league to bring Oregon back to the pack. They will face each other twice next week. Oregon in command in the Pac-12. And right now they are looking at handing Tara Vanderveer her worst home loss in her 33 years of coaching here on the farms. Two ducks have hands. <laughs> uh, wings? What would they have? We, 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 we got that. We're we got breaking some... down the duck anatomy big time today. <laughs> we got Sabrina Ionescu. <laughs> 27 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists. And at some point here, if I, I'm, I'm Kelly Graves, and maybe this is it right now, you, you need to get her and Ruthie out of the game, and Kazorla, really, if you can. You, you don't have many other players to go to, though. That's one of their issues. You don't want anything to happen late in the game. Brown for three. Anna Wilson now in defensively for Stanford. Here's the two-man game. Kazorla off the dribble and a foul on the drive. And let's see, this may be it for Sabrina Ionescu. There is a substitute waiting at the scorer's table. Well, it's been a tough day for Stanford, but there is help on the way. Really neat. I just got to meet Haley Jones, the number one overall hmm. prospect in the nation in the 2019 class. She will be playing here at Stanford next season. She's here sitting in the stands, and alongside of her, she's there in the denim jacket drinking a drink there. Haley is sitting next to a fellow incoming teammate, Hannah Jump. I like it because they were sitting apart in the stands earlier, and then they were like, hey, we're going to be teammates. Let's start the friendship going now. They're actually going to be playing against each other in high school, possibly for the section championship, but they're very friendly and loving each other today. They, uh, they also have Fran Belibi coming in. You may have seen her dunking on YouTube. Another fun one to watch for the Cardinal. And... Uh, Maite Kazorla has checked out of the game. And now another substitute coming in for the Ducks. And that'll be it for Sabrina Ionescu. 27 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists, 2 steals for the native of nearby Walnut Creek. This is a Stanford team that, you know, they've really struggled today on both ends. But they can be dangerous in the NCAA tournament. When they're on point defensively and when they get their perimeter scoring going, they haven't shown that today. Mm -hmm. But they have at other points of the season. Remember, they're the only team to beat Baylor so far this year. But Tar Vanderveer was telling us before the game, you know, while they have Alana Smith leading them, the senior, and Dijon A. Carrington as a junior, there's a lot of young players on this team, freshmen and sophomores that contribute. And next year, when you add that incoming class, this is a program that could be dangerous for the next few years. This is as impressive a score really that anybody has posted all year long. They have come in here and taken it to Stanford on both ends. Sobley and Heberg will now check out. And that streak is uh, about to end. 29 straight losses here in Palo Alto. Their only win in the series back in 1987. Last year, these two squared off for the Pac-12 championship, and the Ducks won that impressively. This one, even more so today. Chavez has been good off the bench, hasn't she? She made her open yep. shots, whether they've been from deep or two. Nice-looking young player. Most points that the Cardinal have given up in a game this year. Swooping in for the rebound. Ducks are going to improve to 23 and 1, 12 and 0 in the league. Stanford 19 and 4. They will fall to 9 and 3 in the league. 
And I know, Holly, you've got a uniform update for us as well, right? Well, you were wondering if ducks have hands and feet, yes. but I know that they do have shoes. They have some of the <laughs> swaggiest uniforms in all of college sports with that great Nike hookup. And um, their shoes caught the attention of someone pretty impressive this year. Oh, really? LeBron James, just a couple of days ago, tweeting out about the Oregon women's basketball. He said their shoes were straight fire. Of course, they were wearing LeBron, so I see why it caught his attention. <laughs> but they were some pretty sweet, swaggy shoes. Um, so LeBron giving the, the Oregon Duck women basketball team a little love on social media. Very impressive. <laughs> my daughter would kill me, my oldest, if I used swaggy twice. <laughs> hey, she, she'd kill me if I used swaggy Swag-ish. once. But can you go swaggy? Holly Rowe can pull that off every time. <laughs> Let's get a closer look at him, Holly. There you go. Oh, oh, straight fire emojis too, huh? From the king. Gifted those special edition LeBron 16s. LeBron has strong emoji game, huh? He does. He does. Swaggy emoji game. <laughs> Final minute here at Maples. An impressive showing for number three, Oregon. Don't forget tomorrow night, UConn and South Carolina, as well as the halftime reveal of the top 16 seeds. And a little smack talk on your ESPN app between uh, Sue Bird and Asia Wilson. Got a men's double uh, header tomorrow night as well for Big Monday. And then the Super Tuesday on the men's side will feature Kentucky, LSU, and Duke Louisville. So a big week of college hoops coming your way. Big wins for Oregon, Notre Dame, and Mississippi State in the quest for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Same for Louisville. And the first win at Stanford since 1987 for the Ducks, snapping that 29-game losing streak as they hand Tara her biggest home loss. Ionescu, 27 points, nine rebounds, eight assists. Ruthie Hebert with 18 today for the Ducks. Sabrina Ionescu on full display today. One of the favorites for National Player of the Year. She gets everyone involved and she can score as well. Her mid-range game was on point. She hit three. She got out, of, out in transition and finished mid-range in the paint no matter where. And no one is better at facilitating and getting her teammates involved as well off the pick and roll. Terrific passes into her post player throughout the course of the game. She was stellar here again today. And Sabrina's with Holly. Well, Sabrina, you guys accomplished something today that your team has not been able to do since 1987, and that is win here. What is that like for your team? This was a crucial win in conference play. I mean, we knew what they were going to do. We knew that this was an important win for us. Um, and we came out and we executed, and it started on the defensive end. And I'm just really proud of our coaching staff and our players and what we did here tonight. Your coach told you that if you got a three-game lead in Pac-12 play, it would almost assure you a championship. Did you have a championship mentality today? I think we did, and I think we played like it. We knew this was an important game, and we knew this was a stranglehold to the conference. If we could get this win, and it was important for us, and I think we grew a lot today. We're getting spoiled. We have this triple-double watch with you. You were just a rebound away, one or two assists away. Um, do they tell you on the bench, like, why don't they keep you in so we get to see that triple-double? Uh, no, they didn't tell me. <laughs> they just pulled me out. <laughs> Trapped. I know. Um, you're just scoring at such a high level, but distributing the ball at such a high level. How are you able to balance both? Um, I just practice at it, and I think my coaches uh, have put me in a great position to get teammates the ball. My teammates are starting to get used to my passes, um, and I mean just practice. I practice, practice, practice. I haven't been playing uh, as well as I wanted to, and I think tonight it helped me a lot. Is it important to do this in front of a hometown crowd, your parents here in the stands? I love it. I mean, my coach is here, my, my parents, my family, and it's, it's nice to come home and be able to get this win here. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank you. 57% from the floor, 75% from beyond the arc today for the Ducks. For Holly Rowe, Rebecca Lobo,